fuego que arde tu piel Soy el agua que mata tu sed El castillo, la torre yo soy La espada que guarda el caudal Tu el aire que respiro yo Y la luz de la luna en el mar La garganta que ansia mojar Que temo ahogar de amor Cuáles deseos me vas a dar Oh, 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 dices tú Mi tesoro basta con mi Hello there, explorer! Selamat datang or welcome to Anita Yusof channel. I hope no one faint hearing my song just now. I'm sure many of you are familiar with that song, right? But those who don't, uh, the title of the song is To You by Rodrigo Amarante. It is the theme song for the famous TV drama Narcos and I'm a big fan of this drama. So why did I sing the song just now? It's because in this episode, we are going to talk about Colombia. First of all, folks, please forgive me for taking too long to continue from the last episode. I have been busy and most of the time very lazy. <laughs> anyway, let's do a little throwback. In the last episode, I had taken you with me riding in Panama. I also told you about Darien Gap, the missing part of the Pan American Highway, and also the unforgettable four days, three nights sailing with Starrard boat heading to Colombia. Sadly, I was informed recently that this Starrard boat had stopped operating due to bad business since COVID hits the world. What a shame. I'm so glad that I managed to sail with it. Okay, let's see what I have in store for you this time. As I mentioned earlier in this episode, I'm going to take you to Colombia, the land of beautiful women and very green landscape. Okay, saya sekarang berada di Plaza San Pedro, old city of Cartagena. So, uh, it's uh, very happening here. Uh, okay, you can see the surrounding. I'm taking a free walking tour. Okay, and uh, okay, that is the guy, the one with the yellow T-shirt. Here there are lots of pigeons. So once motor aku dah selesai customs clearance, tanpa buang masa aku terus start ride. Oh sebelum tu nak bagi tahu korang, aku harap korang tak kisah eh if I mix the language, cakap dalam BM and BI because I receive lots of requests from my Malaysian followers asking me to narrate in bahasa. All this while I narrate in English because I also have many foreign followers. So kita win-win lah eh. Okay sambung cerita. My first impression riding in Colombia is gila. Gila! Especially masa aku nak exit Cartagena. Tapi sorry lah footage nya tak ada. Aku terlupa nak rakam. Pagi tu masa start ride berbakul-bakul aku menyumpah. Tapi dalam hati je lah. Dia orang kat sini drive sesuka hati mak bapak dia je lah. Nak keluar simpang ke, nak belok ke, main masuk aja. Lagi-lagi bas dan lori. Memang macam cilaka. Selagi boleh impit, dia impit. Lepas dah exit Cartagena, then only the road became quiet and I can ride at ease. At least half of Colombia is mountainous and is very green. The road is most of the time winding and the trucks here are long and huge. Ooh, scary okay? Especially when the road is narrow and at tight switchbacks, be prepared lah that half of your lane will be taken by the trucks. Diorang bukan reti nak bawa slow-slow, dah lah makan jalan. Banyak kali lah aku almost nak accident. Ha, korang tengok part ni. Kenapa aku tak potong lori tu? 
Okey, dalam video tak nampak sangat tapi sebenarnya jalan tu curam tau. Motor aku dah dah 150 cc je. Fully loaded pula tu. Tikiakial kau nak mendaki, nak memotong lagi. Lori panjang-panjang pula tu. Huh. Sepanjang jalan memang meriah lah dengan military checkpoint macam ni. Why? As mentioned in the previous episode, Colombia was once famed for its drug and mafia, also bulan gerila yang ganas. Sebab tu banyak checkpoint. Sometimes I was stopped but most of the times they just waved me off. I suppose the tales about the military's power foreigner do it is a thing of the past. Uh, rich Medici and there is a very beautiful viewpoint here so I stop by and enjoy the view it is so green National team yang baru selesai bertanding dengan uh, the junior. Okay, so yeah, everyone is having a peace. Everyone is celebrating. Okay, saya sekarang berada di Yamaha Incon Motors Colombia. Okay, and at the moment this is uh, Mr. Alejandro. Uh, so he's uh, um, the one yang apa ni uh, manage dekat sini. So he's giving me a tour. Uh, it's a very very big uh, area and the best part. Okay, so you can see the showroom here. Okay, uh, ada banyak motor dekat sini. Also the first uh, motorbike which Yamaha invented in 1955 is also here and the unique thing is also they share Yamaha music and Yamaha motors together so dekat bawah tu you can see okay all the musical instruments very cool place every brand new day Every breath of you make Every smile you fake Every bone you break I've been watching you So, sementara aku berjimba-jimba tak sedar diri Motor aku GD telah diberikan belayan sepenuhnya Thank you Yamaha Incol Motors Colombia for the hospitality Service motor done, the next day I went for a short ride to Santa Fe. I was accompanied by Hadir, Incol Motor staff. Uh, I'm on my way to Santa Fe. So this is the beautiful view of the mountain, which uh, I can see along the way. 
and there's a green color river snaking down the valley it is so beautiful Tanta Fe ni sebuah kota lama yang dibuka pada tahun 1541 masih terdapat bangunan-bangunan lama berusia lebih 250 tahun yang dipelihara dengan baik di sini after checking out the old town we rode around the area and went to Puente Colgante di Occidente. Apa ke benda tu? Jambatan dah. Another beautiful view at Santa Fe and this is the Rio Cauca surrounded by the mountains. And there is a long bridge over there. After that, we rode back to Medici and took a cable car ride. For Narcos diehard fans, I'm sure you can relate this view with scenes from the drama. Uh, kita orang sekarang dalam cable car hmm, naik ke atas ni. So from here you can uh, view the city of Medici. So most of the houses here are made from red bricks, as you can see in the video. of Pablo Escobar, the narco, the king of drug, the richest man in the world in the 1990s. Yo soy Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria. Imagine you were born in a poor family, in a poor country. And by the time you were 28 years old, you have so much money you can't even count it. What do you do? You make your dreams come true. Welcome to the Medellin Cartel. Jose Rodriguez gotcha. The Ochoa brothers. And last but not least, Pablo Escobar. Before long, the narcos are pulling in $5 billion a year. To be honest, I am very amazed with what he had done during his era. No, not a good type of amazement, I'm afraid. Why? Because he's responsible for thousands of deaths in Colombia. Can you believe that? I just can't imagine how human can be so inhuman. It's unbelievable. Tapi korang percaya tak? Di sebalik keganasan beliau, Pablo Escobar sangat disayangi oleh golongan bawahan kerana kemurahan hatinya bersedekah dan membina hospital, stadium serta perumahan untuk orang miskin. Sehingga kan ada sebuah pertempatan di Medici dinamakan Barrio Escobar. Bila dah terlalu kaya, Pablo mula bercita-cita tinggi Nak jadi Presiden Colombia Sebab apa? Supaya mudahlah dia nak jalankan bisnes dadah dia tanpa halangan Unfortunately, he forgot that he's a criminal No es bienvenido en esta cámara no Full of rage for the humiliation, Pablo ordered the bombing of Avianca flight, hoping to kill presidential candidate Cesar Gaviria. The plane was destroyed by Jaime Carrera, who didn't even know that the recording device he brought on the plane was actually a bomb. Este es uno de los accidentes más grandes y más misteriosos en la historia de la aviación colombiana. It may have been a bomb that blew up a plane in Colombia today, the Boeing 727 of Avianca Airlines. In his unsuccessful attempt to assassinate presidential candidate Cesar Gaviria, Pablo Escobar murdered 107 innocent people. The Pais of Robin Hood had become a terrorist. Kegilaan Pablo Escobar semakin menjadi-jadi. Sesiapa saja yang menentang pasti akan dibunuh tanpa Pablo banyak Escobar bicara. Se le respeta. Los voy a matar a todos. Son. Dreams may melt away. When everything is The assassination of Luis Carlos Galan 
resulted in the Colombian government declared a war with Pablo and Medici cartel. Ever since then, Pablo Escobar had to live on the run. Colombia's most notorious drug dealer, who under his instructions exploded an aeroplane, killing all 107 passengers on board and was personally responsible for over 4,000 deaths, including three Colombian presidential candidates and more than 1,000 police officers, finally was shot dead on the roof of his hideout on 2nd of December 1992. Benda paling fras masa aku dekat Medeji adalah tak dapat nak visit La Catedral iaitu penjara mewah yang dibina oleh Pablo Escobar untuk dirinya sendiri. Masa tu tahun 2015, manalah ada Escobar tua. Lepas drama narkos meletup-letup di Netflix, barulah berbondong-bondong pelancong dari serata dunia datang untuk melihat kesan peninggalan Escobar, termasuklah La Catedral ni. Tak apalah, a good reason to come back, betul tak? I left Medeji and rode to Kali. The road is as usual winding and it took me two and a half hours to cover the first 100 kilometers. I also passed Autopista del Cafe which means highway kopi. Wangi je bau kopi masa lalu jalan tu. Kali ni dulu narkotang juga. Lepas kejatuhan Medeji Cartel, bisnes dadah Colombia diambil alih oleh musuh ketat mereka iaitu Kali Cartel. Tapi aku tak nak story yang tu. Yang aku nak story pasal kali ini adalah tarian salsa. Famous sangat sampai kali ini digelar The City of Salsa tau. Frankly speaking, aku pun tak tahu beza tarian salsa dengan tango atau flamingo. Sebab bagi aku yang kayu buat menari ni semuanya macam sama aje. Masa kat kali sempatlah aku tengok kelas tarian salsa yang diadakan di hostel tempat aku menginap. Setelah kali, I continue riding to the border. Honestly, my favorite ride in Colombia is from Popayan to Ipiales. It was so green and scenic. Ah, uh, you know Espanol? Ah, ah, uh, yes, uh, I speak English. Ah, okay. Where are you from? Malaysia. Yeah. Ah, where are you from? Ah, I go Ipiales. Ipiales. Yeah. Ah, yeah, sola. <laughs> Gracias. Okey, ciao. Saya dalam perjalanan nak menuju ke border antara Colombia and Ecuador iaitu EPLS and uh, after Popayan the road starts to wind and uh, uh, this is the beautiful mountain view along the way. It's really really amazing. It's really hard for me to keep my eyes on the road. Tapi nak dekat-dekat EPLS, jalan banyak pecah-pecah lah. Dan kalau korang nak tahu, aku cuba dipau oleh orang kampung sebanyak dua kali. Sorry video tak ada. Kadang-kadang aku geram juga sebab momen-momen macam tu selalu berlaku masa GoPro aku tengah off. Tapi kalau korang nak tahu ceritanya, silakan beli buku aku. Okay guys, that's all for now. I hope you have enjoyed the show. Till we meet again, don't forget to subscribe, press the notification bell, drop a comment and share 